Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Girl Boss Method podcast. I'm your host, Abritu Bra. And for tonight's call, we've got one of the girls from inside of the program. She's joining us. Her name is Nia. So she'll be jumping in as well. And um, I'll ask her a few questions as we go along, because it's always nice to get uh, some feedback and some perspective on some of these things as well. So the topic, um, this topic is, again, might seem a little bit harsh, but it's also to try and get you to kind of slow down and think about other things as well. So title is exactly why you are not seeing the results that you want. And so quite often we can all feel a little bit like this from time to time, especially if you've just started on a fitness journey and you feel you feel like you're doing everything. But sometimes you need to just take a step back and actually truly think about what you are considering. So what some of the things that we're going to kind of talk about or, or brush over, if you like, is some of the common mental barriers that you might have when it comes to achieving results, especially if you're in a place that you have never been before and it feels like new territory as well. These sorts of things can put a little bit of a mental barrier. Um, so it's just that's something really important to consider. We obviously want to think of that lovely cliche consistency. It's massively important. And again, we all say consistency, but we really do have to give it time. And then we'll give you some practical tips for, for the fat loss, the toning, the boosting confidence, and obviously setting that those uh, realistic expectations as well. So some of the common beliefs that might hold you back is these are the things that you might say to yourself. So you might say, I'll never be able to lose weight or there's some magic formula that I haven't yet found. Um, and this could be the one that, again, you know, people query or they, they, you know, they find themselves looking on Google or like trying to find uh, maybe even like different programs just to see what looks fun and exciting. And it can be that sort of shiny new thing. Um, there's also the I'm too busy and I don't have the time. And it sounds crazy, but like an hour of of a workout or an hour of activity is only 4% of your actual day. So when you put it like that and you frame it like that, it does make it actually sound a little bit more doable because you think, oh gosh, yeah, that actually, now that you put it like that. Um, and then also I always fall off track. And so why do I bother? And so again, this is where having uh, a support um, is support team or, or accountability is really, really important. So whether that you, you get that from your coach or your a program that you're a part of, uh, the community, or maybe even someone like a friend or a partner who's either on a similar journey or understands what you're going through and helps to keep you um, on track as well. So, um, Nia, I may ask you as well, um, do you have any of these that sort of resonate with how you have felt maybe in the past or maybe of recent times? Um, yeah, I think definitely. I mean, probably all of them at some point. Um, I think that I always fall off track why bother is definitely a... Um, one that comes up quite a lot um because it's very easy to sort of start a fitness journey I think well not easy but you know you kind of have that motivation the first couple of weeks and then life gets in the way and it, mm. yeah it should it should be a priority it should be one of the most important priorities but it's very easy to kind of just not make it a priority and then you don't do it for a week or two and then yeah yeah and then you've lost that consistency. And that's yeah. the that's the issue with um, relying on something like motivation, because motivation is there when you're starting something. It's exciting. It's like almost like when you buy something, right? You could buy, um, maybe you buy a new vacuum cleaner and you think, oh my God, it's so fun. It's like, does everything. It's cordless. And at first you think, oh, I'm so excited. I want to use this every day. And then after a while, you're like, oh, you know, I mean, obviously you're going to clean your house, right? But you're just not going to be as excited about it as you were when you when you first bought it. And it's 
might sound like a funny comparison, but it's just almost like that shiny new thing syndrome. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So this is why consistency is key. And so I'd spend a few moments actually just thinking about this and and actually reminding yourself that consistency really means persistence. I've not spelt that right, but persistence, not perfection. So you want to be continuous and it's those small daily habits that are going to add up. Um, There's no point of going like hard and fast and then, you know, all of a sudden everything, you know, just you just stop. Okay, so it's your inconsistency, which is often the biggest barrier to success. And, you know, I mean, is that something that you feel like you've experienced in, in the past? If I don't know, maybe of recent times? Um, yeah, definitely. I think it's one of the hardest things to sort of just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. Changes don't just happen like overnight. They they take time, you know, and those things are going to multiply all those small things. So let's actually take a step back and, and think about what it is that we are doing to actually stay consistent. Um, so again, some of the things that we might need to think about are, you know, are you actually tracking? Are you, you know, where, whichever format of tracking that is, are you being, you know, um, real with yourself about that? Are you tracking adequately? Are we, you know, for example, today we did a bit of like rough tracking, if you like, just to kind of go through and, and add something, especially when it comes to like, you know, having flexibility around um, lifestyle and stuff as well. I think it's just important to have that transparency there. And then also thinking about adherence as well. So I think this is a really interesting one because sometimes when you are set, for example, macro calorie targets, they might seem so extreme, especially if they feel like you know, um, they're really, they really are putting you in a harsh deficit. We have to think about how easy is it to stay adherent to that? Are you going to be veering off? Are you going to be going off track as a result of those calories being so, so low? So, you know, again, typically when, you know, you sort of go into sort of general, you know, the online world, you might have a look through Google and, and maybe even just see like, even actually, Again, we use my fitness towel. It's a wonderful tool, but if you were to use their generic calculations, a lot of the time they really ramp things down in the way of calories. Um, there's so, for example, they might set you at like a thousand or like twelve hundred calories, and uh, that might work for again when you've got motivation. But after a while, you're going to fall off track, and then you have to think about like your training. Now, when I say training, it doesn't mean that you have to be in there day in, day out. It's like, be consistent. It's not taking off, you know, it's like skipping a day. That's fine. Skipping a couple of days. Yeah, that's cool. Like life gets in the way, but it's also thinking that you don't go ham or hard for, for, for seven, eight days in a row without any rest. And then all of a sudden you've, you, you know, you don't step foot in a gym or you don't do your like workouts, your planned workouts or your planned activity. And you don't do any of that for like, 10, 14 days, like that's where the issue relies. So again, lack of consistency. And then we're thinking about keeping those steps up. Those steps, one of the reasons why we use steps as a marker is it also allows us to try and be consciously active. So again, it's very easy to kind of go, right, I've done my workout, I'm doing my calories, but I'm stuck and sat at at a desk all day long. Um, So it's really important to try and get those steps up and And think about those small opportunities or those when, you know, window opportunities to kind of get up and get out and then creating some mindfulness about this situation, patience, considering sleep and also water as well. So we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail. So, again, when we're thinking about tracking. So tracking your meals, your calories, my fitness pal is probably the best way to do this. There are obviously other methods, but again, they're not going to help you get. Um, the results that you want. So again, if we're thinking about just sort of like 
food groups or or maybe thinking about healthy eating again it's very difficult to know if we're overshooting in terms of like energy intake versus energy expenditure so that's that's where it can be really important and that's what's going to be effective um, monitoring of your body measurements and your weight again it's having that mindfulness around this and knowing that you're not um, emotionally attached to standing on the scales there are a number of strategies that you can do and from time to time um, again depending on whichever ladies I'm working with there may be periods where we step away from it okay especially if there becomes like uh, a very emotional attachment towards it however we can go the other end and actually work on daily tracking almost just to kind of show you the uh, as an exercise to show you the fluctuations that may happen over the course of a week, for example. And then really just focusing on those non-scale victories. So we're going to think about things like your energy levels and how clothes are fitting. And also having some perspective in terms of like zooming out and thinking about where you were in time, like whether it was this time uh, a couple of months ago or maybe even this time last year. Thinking about what it is that you've achieved that's allowed you to push the needle and, and move forward as well. And then obviously, yes, we need to think realistically, you know, are you actually sticking to your plan? So when we're thinking about this, it's, it's not about perfection. It's just, again, coming back to consistency. And so if there is a fall off or a fallout and, you know, it tends to be sort of the weekends and, and the social events and stuff, we don't want to ignore those. I think they are massively important to your, our sort of um, social, emotional and mental health. These might be pillars, again, that are often neglected on uh, fitness journeys. Uh, you know, again, if you're somebody that's going hard and fast and thinking that this is the only route and the only goal, you have to remember that we can create change without it becoming your life. So it's really important to have some time off, but again, creates with that transparency, creating some some rough logging, some guesstimation. Um, and again, just approaching maybe even some of these social events differently. Perhaps maybe you were somebody that would um, drink alcohol in excess um, and then never log it or never really think about the alcohol choices that you're making and, and the impact of, of obviously being drunk and the next day and the hangover and stuff. Those are the sorts of things that can, yeah, they can have an impact on how you operate following that event as well. So, uh, you know, tips and tricks and things that we can do is obviously opting for, you know, lower calorie uh, mixers and 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 uh, spirits and things. And then also having either swaps, you know, whether it's um, recently I gave one of the girls like kombucha or introduced her to kombucha as a fun drink to have um, when she was out in between, you know, alcoholic drinks also, being mindful about hydration as well. And then, yeah, staying flexible without quitting. So again, we have to plan for these event eventualities. And as long as they're not like every single, you know, you've got four nights a week where you're off out, um, then we obviously have to look at different tactics and different ways that we can accommodate that sort of lifestyle. Um, but yeah, just things to kind of bear in mind. And then Thinking about the importance of like effective training. Uh, so sort of working out versus sort of training with intention. Um, again, it's very easy to kind of go, right, I'm just doing the weight and this is it. So it's really important to improve your technique. Um, so again, we, we could almost cycle this in terms of progressive overload, thinking about increasing the reps, increasing the weight, increasing the technique. And then maybe even having a week of being like normal with it. Okay. So just almost like working on that sort of four week pattern or cycle. Um, and yeah, strength training is king for toning. That's what's going to help us. And cardio, again, it's helpful. It gives us uh, like, you know, um, some, again, some additional cardiovascular strength. It can be beneficial in terms of helping you become more active, but it is not the answer to fat loss because we need to think about all the different types of body mass that we have, everything 
when we're losing weight, it's not just fat. There are so many other things that are utilized or broken down. We're thinking about muscle tissue, water, et cetera. So we really want to try and retain as much muscle mass or lean tissue when we are in a deficit. Okay. So moving enough throughout the day. So the importance of non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So does that make sense to you, uh, Nia? Have we talked or have yeah. you, you heard about the sort uh, of meat as well? Yeah, so I think that's, yeah, no, I've heard about it, yeah. Okay, it's kind brilliant. of just improving your kind of movement in the day that's not, you know, formal exercise or... Yeah, exactly. So it's not planned exercise. It's just, again, it's those getting up and uh, taking a phone call, um, standing up, maybe even like catching up with a friend that you you might normally do just sort of sitting on the sofa. You might get up and go out for a walk around the block. Just little yeah. things like that. Yeah. Okay. So just waiting for our next slide to load. All right. So again, mindfulness, the mental game. So mindset is going to massively impact your fitness journey. So again, we're practicing some mindfulness around the food and our habits as well. And yeah, identifying any emotional triggers as well for when it comes to overeating. And this again comes from a place where perhaps maybe um, there's like high stress, whether it's um, at home life or work life or friendships, or relationships or you know, general hustle and bustle of life, etc. Trying to look at and create different outlets to help with those um, emotional triggers, for example. And and firstly, it's knowing that you are not your emotional triggers, um, and they do not equal you. So it's almost like thinking of other strategies and and ways to you know, explore that as well. So again, mindfulness around the food and the habits, not being in like any sort of like heavy restriction and a calorie deficit, you know, generally when you, you look at things, people will often recommend like, you know, a nice 500 calorie deficit. Okay. And the reason they might say that is because um, you are looking at 700 and no, 7,700 calories um to create half a kilo of weight loss per week and so that's what i'm thinking in my mind i hope i've got that specifically correct but i don't have that in front of me so um again that's a that's a weight loss but we are trying to make this a little bit more sustainable so we're going to work and move at a place that you can manage as well and then patience right so results do take time. And especially when we're looking at trying to do things sustainably, um, quick fixes, they don't last. And again, you want to think and focus about focus on celebrating those small wins and, and working on those improvements. It's all those small habits, those small building blocks, those things that we think don't matter. And you you think that they might equal the results, but it's, it's the small things that we do each day that are going to help us over time. And kind of wanted to talk um, briefly about sleep as well. Um, so, Nia, when you have had a poor night's sleep, have you found that it affects your hunger, mood and performance? Yeah, definitely. I like um, it just affects everything. Yeah. And again, like similarly, I you know, we're human and, and I've experienced this as well. I know that if I've had a poor night's sleep, and it's not always equal to this, but I may find that naturally I'm hungrier, right? And so yeah. it's it's just really important to try and focus on those. And again, it's very difficult depending on um, what your lifestyle is like. So again, if you have children or you have uh, like shift working or anything like that, I think it's looking at strategies to try and get as much quality sleep as possible. Um, and this brings me on to like sleep hygiene as well. Um, so especially an hour before bed, I would say literally start to wind down. So 
we want to think about sleep opportunity and not just sleep, right? So you don't want to go, right, I'm going to be up at 6 a.m. So I'm going to go to bed at 11 because that's seven hours of sleep. Well, it's not really because you're only really programming yourself to have that much time of opportunity. So it's really important that some of the things that we do is stay away from uh, blue light. So from our phones, uh, any screens, et cetera, even television. And um, I'm not really the best at reading books. And I probably read about one or two pages and then I'll like fall asleep. So it clearly, clearly works for me getting a book out. Um, but just even things like, you know, drawing the, the the blinds and the curtains closed and, you know, maybe even like pottering around the house and, and doing a few last minute chores and, you know, maybe changing like your dishcloths or packing things away or, or getting a bag ready for the next day. It's all these little things where you're almost like mentally telling your mind, like it's ready to wind down, it's ready to start to reduce that sort of um, that energy as well and just start getting ready for for bedtime. Anything that you've tried personally, um, Nia, to help with this? Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not great at this. <laughs> um, after I put, I usually. Well, I mean, no, I like. I do sort of swap the house and everything, but then, yeah, and then probably watch a bit before bed because it's the only time that I get without without when I just asleep. Um, but yeah, I probably should stay away from the blue light a bit more. Um, yeah it's really hard actually because I think there's there can also be like an element of um uh of a bit of FOMO especially when it comes to things like the you know when you're watching a Netflix program and everybody's talking about it and you just feel like oh you know what I really need to know what's going on and you know whether it's just yeah. the, the way that it operates that it and it starts to like draw you in as well. And then you feel like you can't let go and there's another one and then another one. And it sounds really funny, but people often ask me, oh, do you watch series? And I don't, it sounds crazy. I watch old reruns because I feel like I don't need to stay fixated yeah. and I don't get drawn in because I, I know what's going to happen. Um, and I've never got into Game of Thrones for that reason because I think it oh, ran for about 11 never years. never watched it either. Yeah, I've never watched so let's not do that um but <laughs> yes I think that's I tend to stick to documentaries because they are generally over you know um quite quickly as well so you know it's like an hour of watching or an hour and a half so um yeah that's just something that I guess you could say I I've learned from as well I don't know if that's also come from you know the days of when you were a uni student and you could binge binge watch stuff <laughs> um yeah so hydration water is your best friend okay so obviously when we're thinking about water it, it plays a, a crucial role in in fat loss and maintaining energy levels as well so it's going to help with your metabolism boosting your digestion and aiding in some format the breakdown of fat so it's going to help you keep hydrated um help with prevent fatigue and curb hunger as well and, and improve your overall performance daily daily performance so we've all heard that sort of saying if you like I'm trying to think of it but you know hunger can be mistaken uh, or dehydration can be mistaken for hunger right so really we want to think about you know whether it's just um having daily reminders set up on your phone for water to to, to drink water or or actively keeping a bottle or a glass next to your desk or even aiming to get in a certain amount of water by midday like and often people will start the day with like coffee teas water's almost like a an afterthought and then um and then, you know, next minute, you know, it's two in the afternoon and you're absolutely, you know, you're really thirsty. So, yeah, definitely don't miss out on that one. OK, so when we're thinking about where we could be going wrong, uh, just to kind of summarize for you. So consistency, tracking and ad adherence, uh, training, your step counts, having some mindfulness and patience and uh, obviously the, the importance of a sleep and hydration. And I thought we'd end with um, this sort of little quote, if you like. You are the sum of your daily habits and not the occasional actions. It's what you do consistently that will help shape your results. 
So I hope you've enjoyed watching or listening into this episode today. And if you want to learn more, you can send me a message on Instagram via Richie Bra. I'd like to thank Nia for joining in today and um, adding adding a few sort of t- tips or some um, you know associations as well. So that's been really helpful to have somebody else giving giving some input and an insight into how things work for them. And uh, yeah, we will see you here next time.